final home game of the season for number eight NC State Wolfpack welcoming in Syracuse tonight. That's eight o'clock on ACC Network. Jen and LaChina, we'll send it back to you. Welcome into the ACC Network studios. We will get you out to this game in just a second. Syracuse on the road taking on number eight NC State tip off coming your way in just seven minutes. But right now sitting alongside 37 to 29. This game coming your way in just a few minutes. Kayla Jones and NC State trying to get back on track. They've lost three out of the last four. Been a tough stretch for them. That game coming your way in just a few minutes right here on ACC Network. Guys, real quick, as we look at this game, Monica, what do you think the key Dang is for NC State? It's dangerous. Alyssa Kunay needs to come to play. Ace Koenig and Kai Crutchfield have to hit shots against that zone. Y'all know Syracuse is my beloved wounded animal. <laughs> they have the opportunity to play spoiler. This is a dangerous game for NC yeah. State. The older guards have to step up for NC State and can't get sucked into that pace that Syracuse wants to play. Mm -hmm. They have to step up on the offensive end, but on the defensive end, I think they have to take control of Syracuse guards and Lewis and Cooper. Senior night for NC State. We'll get you right out to Deb Antonelli and Pam Ward. And welcome to Reynolds Coliseum on the campus of NC State for the penultimate game for both teams in the ACC regular season. The NC State Wolfpack, indeed led by Elisa Kunane, celebrating four seniors. It's Koenig, the only senior starter, but we will say all four of them start tonight as they take on the Syracuse Orange. The Orange coming off a heart-crushing loss to Notre Dame over the weekend. And we welcome you to Reynolds Coliseum, Pam Ward with Deb Antonelli. Went to school right here, played yes. right here in this building. And boy, two weeks ago tonight, we were here. First place on the line, Louisville and NC State. State lost that game and has not been the same since. No, since they went to number four in the rankings, and then now they're still number eight. I think they need to play like the number eight team in the country. I actually think the Syracuse pace is going to be a good recipe for NC State because they've struggled to score. This is going to get them up tempo, and they need to play two and through Elise Kunane on the inside at 6'5". She is a tremendous scorer on the interior. She is a, the only player in the ACC that averages a double-double, and she can score in a variety of ways around the rim. She also has the ability to pick and pop, but if they can get her going inside, she changes the space and opens up the floor and opens up the court for the guards for NC State to be able to knock down some shots. Yeah, which they have not been doing. Syracuse, though, has not one but two players that can maybe help neutralize Kune. Yeah, I think we know about Kiara Lewis, right, Pam? I mean, she's their leading scorer. She's a terrific guard on the top of the floor. She makes everything work inside their pace. But on the inside, for NC State to win, they're going to have to deal with the post presence of Syracuse on the interior, especially Job Detaldi. I think she's one of the more unheralded players inside the ACC and certainly across the country with her ability to score block to block and her ability to run the floor. Both these players will be very physical in that matchup with Elise Kunane on the interior. Now, the ACC tournament starts on Wednesday, and we give a hearty congratulations to Jeff Walls and his team because they are going to be the ACC regular season champion. They had an emphatic win against Boston College, their first outright championship, important for a state to keep on winning. Hold on to that two seed, because Duke, what, Duke has won six in a row, and they are hard charging. Duke came in here and played very well on Monday night in the Play for K game, which is a really tough environment to win in. So we are underway. NC State again starting four seniors, so you don't see Kunane out there yet, but we anticipate she will be in relatively soon. There's Finkley, one of those inside players. And here come the Wolfpack. We know Syracuse likes to play that 2-3, and then Quentin Hillsman, the head coach, has a call. Usually it's stick, and that means they switch to their man-to-man. -man. Outside shot, great start. That's Grace Hunter making her first start of the season. Well, Grace Hunter is one of those three seniors on the floor with Ely and along with Erica Cassell that all tore their ACL last year, were all starters when that happened. And they are playing here in senior night, and it, senior night can go one of two ways for, for NC State. Yeah, sometime very emotional. Gabby Cooper answered with the three. Syracuse takes more threes than any other team in the ACC, and yet only Notre Dame shoots them at a worst percentage, so they will put them up. 
That is a push in the back. Jules Gallion with the call. He's working with Tierra Cruz and Joe Vasili. That foul on Finkley. Really great ceremony here before the game for the seniors. Ace Koenig, the Canadian, they sang the Canadian national anthem. It was wonderful. Seniors had a lot of their family here with them. Including Ace, who has her parents, grandparents, and sister. Nobody with the box out. But Engsler, who's one of the best rebounders in the league, in fact, second behind Kunain, came up with it for the Orange. Kara Lewis misses from the outside. No offensive board as Hunter brings it up. The plague of ACLs last year, and still NC State got to the Sweet 16. Hunter took a step. The redshirt senior from right here in Raleigh started her collegiate career at Charlotte, then came to play for Wes Moore, now in his seventh year on the sidelines. Well, Wes has done a terrific job. 12 times he's been coach of the year at three or four different stops. And is on the late season list for Naismith National Coach of the Year this season. NC State losers of three out of four. Lewis has missed two in a row. Cassell comes up with the rebound. State attacking the paint. Who needs Kunain? This is the pace that NC State, I think, needs as a remedy for their shooting ills. You know, they, they're going to get uh, opportunities with the floor opened up to be able to drive gaps and to be able to kick. And they need to play through the post. That's when they've been their best. Before they went on the streak where they lost three of four, I said they were the best team feeding the post in the country. I thought they did the best at throwing a bounce pass inside. Finkley and they got away the from that. Pair. Pardon me, Finkley with the basket. Yes, indeed, they got away from it, and their three stopped dropping. They've only averaged 59 points a game during that four-game stretch that Deb alluded to. Well, it's hard to bring help to the high-low game, and this is a terrific piece of execution by Syracuse. Engsler inside to Finkley, and a great bucket in on the interior. I mean, both teams, I think, are, are playing at a very high clip right now in uh, taking care of the ball. Last foul was on Gabby Cooper, and another three ball from Cassell, just her sixth of the season. Didn't play at all in the game Monday night against Duke here at Reynolds. Pinkley, they're going to her often with Kunay not in there, but that one did not fall. Rebound ripped down by Kayla Jones. Ace! Floor opens up, NC State playing in transition. Ace had missed 18 of her last 23s before that one. She looked good in shoot around this afternoon, nailing some threes, including one from up in the stands. Lewis, 0 for 3. Good rebound. Engsler shows you some yeah. of that skill. No, I, I'm a big fan of Emily Engsler on the inside. And she was one of the players in the ACC, along with Kunain, averaging a double-double. But I think she's got tremendous skill set all the way to the three-point line. And they can invert her to the block where she can be effective as well. Left wide open. That time did not fall for Jones. Engsler, though, has really been in a funk in the last three games, just 11 total points. Got that shot on the nice follow after the rebound. Lewis. State likes to jam and go under that screening action, and Lewis 0 for 4 to start the game, Pam. That was the first two she has taken. Kara Lewis, fourth in the league, averaging just under 18 points per game. One of the keys against the Syracuse zone is you have to reverse the ball and then look to attack the gaps. And see, now they switch to man. Coming to the rescue, Ely. Shot clock, though, down at five. And she ran into Finkley and took a step to try to avoid it. The first substitutes come from Syracuse, actually. As Wes Moore is sticking with his four senior lineup. Well, the thing about Wes is if things are going well and the team is playing well with you on the floor, you're probably going to stay. And you know who's in for Syracuse? Number three, Maeva Jaldi Tabdi, the redshirt sophomore from Paris. Number three. She does a great job of sealing in the room. 
in the lane. And right away she goes after Cassell, but can't get it to fall. Really good defense inside by Erica Cassell, because Job Detaldi is one of the best scoring low post players with her back to the basket in the ACC. Anxler gets the Cassell miss. Good pace as we are under five minutes to go in the first quarter. Not a lot of whistles. Anxler, terrific feed to Jodley Tobdy. See, Emily Anxler letting the game come to her. Hasn't taken a bad shot. She's got a couple of assists and an offensive rebound already in the game. Second on the team in assists behind Lewis. Syracuse down by one. Cassell working on Jodley Tobdy and the foul will send us to break. Good start, NC State leading Syracuse by one. Ace Koenig and her family who are here all the way from British Columbia on the Pacific coast of Canada. And a very nice gesture, the Canadian flag flying, the Canadian anthem sung, and three other members of the senior <laughs> class honored. You know what, there were no tears, there were nothing but smiles from this group. It was exciting to see them all come out with their families. They were celebrating, of course, Wes has got to get his mug in there for a little photo bomb. <laughs> yeah, the Koenig family, as Cassell is at the free throw line. Parents, Frank and Tanya, grandparents Ruth and Harold, and the sister Mackendra Koenig, who just scored 47 points yeah. in a high school game. She's uh, on the, played for Aus Austria on the U16 team. She's a baller as well. She'd probably look pretty good in a red and white NC State uni. She uni. Is, yep, has a dual citizenship with Canada and Austria. And the big cheer you heard is because Big Smile is in. Lisa Cunane, number 33, and she is already, you can see the physical stuff going on underneath. Yeah, they, most teams have been physical with her, really challenging her on the inside. Anxler and Job Detaldi not communicating on that high-low. There is Elisa Cunane averaging a double-double. Yes, the only one in the league doing that, leading her team in just about every statistical category except assists, which we forgive her for because she's that person there. Yes. Terrific ball movement. Ball doesn't. State, with the court open, is taking, uh, giving them an opportunity to take advantage of their full offensive skill set. Great seal inside, good pass away from the defense. Anxler called for the foul, and the most emotional person we saw today was at the free throw line. It's Kunane. Big smile, had big tears all day. She told us to shoot around. She said she woke up, she was crying in class. She was crying on her way over to practice this afternoon. It's an emotional kid who, uh, you know, this is a very uh, well-connected team. A sweet kid from the Greensboro area. Nothing but net. That's Lewis with her Kira first Lewis. basket after she missed her first five. So Kiera Lewis four. knows that NC State's going uh, jam and going under, so she's going to have to be able to make some shots. Lewis, 24 points in the loss to Notre Dame, including career point number 1,000 on Sunday. Strachmanon hustled but could not catch up with it. Digna has yet to take a shot for the Orange. Second leading scorer on this team behind Lewis. I look for a direct pass into Kunane on this out-of-bounds play. Kunane sets the screen, does the roll. It is picked up. Andy Tobby. Shot clock at six. Ely. What a take. Going left. Great post up by Kunane. It occupied the help defense. Here's Strotman on his first shot. Just a little bit too strong. And NC State really looking to run. Koenig underneath. Good look. Good help defense. And a travel by Koenig. Tisha Hyman with the help defense helped that along. Watch Elisa Kunane. She's going to post up inside, and she's going to occupy some space. Ely able to finish. NC State up by six. Hyman in and out. Kunane chases it down, gets it up to Koenig. Kunane 
could not handle the pass, but it goes off of Gabby Cooper, Wolfpack ball. And that's a great opportunity for Kayla Jones to ball fake that little pass and then spin the other way and score over her left shoulder. She is the second leading scorer for the Wolfpack. Honig left open, momentarily at least, and chose not to shoot. There's an outside shot. Honig couldn't hit, but a second chance. Almost got Kunain right in the face. That'll work. Yeah. NC State really moving the ball well. It's not getting stuck in anybody's hands. They're playing off the pass. 10 to two run has given State this nine point lead, their largest of the night. So that is not a good choice. Swatmana easily able to pick it off. And gets it into the hands of Kiera Lewis, playing the point this year, and also leading them in scoring. NC State's defense is they call it squeeze the screener or jam and go under. And Kiera Lewis is getting comfortable in that ball screen defense. Well, she's missed, or excuse me, made a couple in a row. That's a good look, Kunane, with another chance for a three point play. Lisa Kunane doing a great job working block to block, running the floor hard. Watch her get inside position to the front of the rim with a little bit of contact, and she keeps her eyes on the rim. Finkley got there a little late. That is two fouls now on Finkley, who goes to the bench. Delisha Milton-Jones in the gold sweater, talking to her. Milton-Jones, one of the, just a terrific basketball player, both in Florida and in the WNBA, first year on Quentin Hillsman's staff. And a great addition for them. Two three-point plays now for Kunane, and See, here's a pick. NC State changed how they were going to guard their ball screen defense, and that's why they got the turnover. Because Kunane was going to hedge. Mara Lewis, known as Kiki. Megan Tabi, nothing doing, and they're going to call a foul on the box-out attempt by Ely. Coming up Sunday, men's basketball is number 11 Louisville hosts Virginia Tech at 6 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And you know what happens at noon Eastern on the ACC Network? Louisville hosts Virginia Tech. There's a double header. How about that? Both in the building and on the ACC Network. So just turn it on at noon and don't leave. To Leah Washington off glass. Got Washington getting some early minutes. Freshman from District Heights, Maryland. Jakia Brown-Turner, who plays for the Wolfpack. They played ball together a little bit outside of Washington. Kunane zips it. Good position again, and Elisa got fouled. That's gonna be two shots. She was trying to tap that in, and she got inside position on Engsler on the weak side. Tell you what, Kayla Jones doesn't get enough credit inside what NC State does. She is a big body, strong off the bounce. Very good screener, runs the floor, has three-point range. The second leading scorer for NC State. This is already the third trip to the line for Kunane, who gets there on average about six and a half times per game and hits 80% of the time, so she's almost automatic. When your big girls have good footwork, great hands, and a soft touch, that all works together inside that four out one end that Wes Moore likes to run. And Syracuse will have the last shot. Lewis with the ball in her hands, looks over at her coach. See a different ball screen D that time on Lewis. Engsler. Syracuse trailing 25 to 16. They were outscored by eight once Kunane got into the game. Welcome back to uh, NC State. Now, if the ACC tournament started today, and it won't, Louisville is the number one seed. They clinched the outright regular season championship by beating Boston College. You see NC State second. Duke's winner of six in a row is third. 
and Florida State in the four spot. Very important because you get the double bye. And that is so important for a chance to win a championship. Otherwise, the teams that are playing in the first round would have to win five games in five consecutive days, and that's never been done. And congratulations again to Louisville. They beat Boston College handily, even though Balagoon and Evans, neither one of them played. They sat out with uh, some ankle issues. Tell you what, Jada Boyd, when she catches on that elbow, is so tough to deal with. She's so quick to the rim. And she tries to help and picks up a foul. Westmore has an incredible opportunity to put Jada Boyd in positions on the floor because of her athleticism where she can be productive. Right there, she gets a foul call trying to help on Job Taldi. And this is the free throw. I would run the same thing. I'd put Jada Boyd right back on the elbow in the middle of that playmaking spot against the zone. She's number five in white. Koenig took a step. Second time that Ace has been called for a travel. Yeah, that's twice. Got to get the ball down before you move your feet. Florida State right now 23 points ahead of Clemson, so that looks good for them holding on to the four the all-important fourth slot in the ACC standings. And that, if that's on Kunain, that's two quick ones, and it is. Wow, the, the way the game is being officiated, you have to be able to adjust, but there's been no foul call down here on the other end is what Kunain is saying. They're pushing me in the back. Yeah, and you don't see her complain that much either. No. She was baffled by that call. Right, because she knows that she gets two fouls that Wes Moore is going to sit her. So Cassell, number 24, back in for Kunane. Erica had five started tonight. What a tough two by Kiara Lewis. I mean, she is a shot seeker, Pam. She likes to play in their ball screen action, but she's certainly very good off the bounce. Freshman year at Ohio State, and then it's been the last couple of years at Syracuse. Inside, nice catch by Cassell. He rolled it in. Doesn't need to counter, not comfortable going left, so she gets back to her right hand over her left shoulder. Already with seven points tonight, she has tied her season high in scoring. And we got an offensive foul on Syracuse. Nick Cassell shows the ball, gets back to her left shoulder, finds a way to muscle it in. And now that foul was on Jaldi Tobdi, so both Maeva and Finkley have two fouls apiece. Finkley has been on the bench for a while with the two fouls. So, you know, both coaches are kind of like, okay, is that a makeup call? Right? I mean, you don't like to say that, but, but it happens. Cassell. Good team. Oh, wow. Schottmanov with the block. That's a nice basket cut by Boyd. You just got to finish that play. Jakia Brown Turner is defending Kiara Lewis. I think Jakia Brown Turner is turning into that best perimeter defender for Westmore. As you can see, Job Dutaldi's skill set on the inside, and there's a steal by Lewis. That leads the team in steals, among many other things. And just like that, it's a five point ball game. And a foul on Washington trying to inba on the inbounds, excuse me. She just picks the pocket of Ace Koenig. 8-2 Syracuse run. Clinton Hill's been wearing a tie that once belonged to his dad. Yes, isn't that cool? That uh, his dad will have been passed 19 years in March on the second. And he's wearing a tie that came from his dad's closet. To honor his dad. Washington, short. Now most times you'd say that's too quick but not if you're playing for Quentin Hills. Right. If you're open, you shoot it from outside the arc. Syracuse two of nine from three so far tonight. Koenig, step back three. Rim out, nice play. Good luck trying to keep Jada Boyd off the offensive board. She is explosive in her play around the rim. Better call Strotman up for the foul as Boyd hit the deck. Watch Jada Boyd get to the glass. 
She does a great job of reading the angles, and she sprints to the rim. Does a nice job of catching and finishing off the boards. What a nice game Monday night, the game that you and Beth called. 15 points, 10 of them coming in the fourth quarter. But NC State came up short, losing 70 to 65. But they have led the entire way tonight. There's the Syracuse pressure that we're used to seeing. Lewis way out on her. Good job getting inside that playmaking spot on the floor against a 2 3 zone. Kayla Jones with another bucket. Swapmana working underneath, height advantage. Not close. Almost got that caught up on her hip. Crutchfield in. There's another player for the Wolfpack that really needed to find the range outside the arc. She has not shot it well in the month of February either. And NC State's on a 7 0 run. Crutchfield had missed eight of her last 10 threes before that one. 12 point advantage, biggest lead. But if you've watched Syracuse all season long, no lead is safe against the. Cuse because of their ability to score and the tempo that they play and the way they plan on turning you over. And they were down 18 points to uh, Notre Dame and came back and made it That's again. right. Back on Sunday, came back from way down to beat Virginia Tech at home earlier this year. And then that crazy win against Florida State with the Engstler tip-in. Nice so floater, Brown Turner. Isn't she smooth? Very. This is going to be a big time player in the ACC. She defends the toughest assignment on the perimeter, and she can score from the three point line inside. I think she's going to be the freshman of the year in the ACC. Kanksler off the mark. Koenig. Resets, pops. Lewis able to come up with it. Danny Cooper's been quiet tonight. Just three points so far. Abby with back-to-back double-doubles coming into tonight. Shot clock now into single digits. Brown Turner working on Lewis. And they call a travel. So NC State on senior night, up 12, timeout in Raleigh. Yep, getting down into crunch time on both the men's and the women's side. The women's ACC tournament begins Wednesday in Greensboro. And you see that Duke Virginia game we have coming up on the men's side. That is the last three. ACC tournament title winners. And it's going to shape up to be a very interesting ACC tournament this year. A lot of uh, surprises so far. Louisville was picked to win the league. They have done that in the regular season. Finkley back in has been on the bench for a long spell with two fouls. Just had it ripped out of her hands by Boyd. Wolfpack basketball. You know, one of the things for NC State against Duke, besides the fact that they turned it over 16 times and Duke scored 23 points off those 16 turnovers, they were 0 for 7 in their ATOs, which is after timeouts. Let's see if they can score here, because this would be after a timeout. And let's see if they have the right execution to be able to score. And Kudain is not in there because she has two fouls. Crutchfield elevates over Strabana, who picked up her second foul that last trip down the floor for the Orange. Two strong dribbles to the elbow. That's all you need. Crutchfield's capable of making that play. And if you don't get on Kiara Lewis in transition and find her early, she is going to find a shot. Oh, and then a silly foul by Lewis. But that is her first. 
played AAU with Gabby Cooper, and they reunited when Lewis transferred over to Syracuse, and now Ely heads to the free throw line. Kayla missed all of last season after she blew her knee in October in the preseason. Look at that push up the floor. Behind Explosive. The Nobody stopped the ball. Tisha Hyman, the freshman from White Plains, New York. Four out, one in for the Wolfpack. They're doing a much better job of moving the ball around the perimeter. Boy, Jones has really wanted the ball tonight. Had it knocked out of her hands. It goes over to Syracuse. And Neil Hobby, a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, comes in to give Jones a break. And Kayla gets a nice round of applause. She's got seven tonight. Pressed into the point roll, point guard roll when Tiana Mangakahia was diagnosed with breast cancer. You know, March 1st, a special will be coming out on Tiana for the ACC Network. I'm looking forward to watching that. And she is just an outstanding individual. Did not make the trip, however, today for Syracuse. Tiana back home. Great ball movement, good reversal. Ball doesn't touch the floor. NC State looks like the old NC State tonight. They're passing the ball, they're running the floor. They're not playing off the bounce. Playing through the post. Shotwin I did not elect to pick it up. Instead it's Hyman who fires away. And good ball movement by the Cuse. Now we're clicking, right? Now we got a good game, right? We got some offense, Pam. Which always makes you happy. Always. Bring it up, bring it up. Camille Hobby in the game for NC State, just a freshman, number 41 in white. NC State spent a lot of time working on feeding the post and relocating on the perimeter. Hobby trying to post up Finkley, who has two fouls. Shot clock is dying. Hobby's got to shoot it, and she's not going to get it off. And Ely had the ball in the late shot clock. She's the point guard, she's gotta make a better decision. Look, the ball goes inside in transition. Look how quickly NC State moves it. Grace Hunter with a one dribble pull up. And then on the other side, Syracuse doing the same thing, wide open. I'm in two in a row. Nope, a little bit too strong. Stratmana fouled during the shot attempt. Stratman are not finding much opportunity outside the arc or from the, her face-up game. And she, so she inverts to the block and gets on the glass and adds value to her team by getting to the free throw line. Foul was on Ely. Stratman are only the, she's only 17 of 19 from the line on the whole season. We invite you to watch nothing but net. This Sunday, every Sunday, it's our basketball studio show, but very special this week, the debut of the feature on Tiana Magakahia, Through My Words, 8 Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. You don't want to miss it. I saw a little preview for it, and it's going to be outstanding. What an inspiration, Tiana, is. We know you're watching, Tiana. Tough for T. We're with you. We can't wait to see you come back next year. Yeah, she's been cleared and is practicing. It's going to petition the NCAA for an extra year of eligibility because of the medical red shirt she had to take this season. That's not a done deal already? I mean, it's done deal to me. It better be. I think we might have something to say to the NCAA if it's not done. <laughs> well, I always have something to say. I know, I know you do. <laughs> Lewis, chance for free throws. Just because I care. We're all stakeholders in the game. It's trying to help the game grow, get better, because the game is outstanding. The players are terrific. The resources, the play calling, all of it. We got a lot of great ticket selling players in the game, like this one right here at the free throw line, Kiara Lewis. She is worth the price of admission.
Broncos one out of two on that trip. You got a chance for a two for one here, but you got to practice it, which means you get two possessions and Syracuse would only get one if you play the clock right. Chance for a last shot for Syracuse. Cooper gives it up to Lewis. Our former AAU teammates. A lot of times I'd like to go double screen or triple screen for Lewis. It'll be a late ball screen. Coach Q uh, yelling out instructions rather. Lewis, long three. Yeah, they waited too long. Too slow developing. NC State has led from wire to wire. Biggest lead was 12 points. It's a seven point advantage. As we head into the locker room, stayed up 40-33. Welcome into the ACC Network studios alongside Elena Beard, Monica McNutt, and Kelly Gramlich. I'm Kelsey Riggs. Right now, NC State with a 40 to 33 lead. Guys, they've struggled lately, winning three or losing rather three out of the last four. Just a seven point lead. Monica, are they back? Mm, are they back? <laughs> um, they look good. They look good this first half, but I also know that Syracuse is probably, if we're going superlative, streakiest team in the league would be Syracuse. How would you describe Syracuse? Uh, <laughs> I have described Syracuse. Oh, is a wounded here we animal. go again. Syracuse, okay, listen, Syracuse is a wounded animal, which for me, as well as NC State, has played Kelly. I can't say that NC State is out of the in the clear yet because of what Syracuse can do. Kiara Lewis has a knack for hitting timely baskets. Emily Inksler has not had a terrific game, but she and Digna Stratman can give you two threes, six point swing. It's a seven point game right now. It's not over at all. They're never out of a game because mm -hmm. they can shoot the three so well. Remember, Kunain has been on the bench for most of that first half with some foul trouble. So I feel like NC State has played pretty well even without Kunain. And you know, we were making that point, Elena. I felt like NC State was kind of in the driver's seat, but it's only a seven point game and it speaks to Syracuse's ability to hang around. Yeah, I, I think a lot depends on Cooper and Lewis, and I said this before, and that they control the tempo of the game. Against their last game against Notre Dame, they was they were down by 16 points, but the two of them came back and turned it up mm -hmm. to another level on the defensive end and the offensive end, and it changed the course of the game. And I think they're going to do the same thing in this side, in the mm -hmm. second half. NC State trying to get back on track. Meanwhile, Kara Lewis spotting up for three, couple more threes, and maybe she could have her team at the top. They trail right now by seven at the break. Welcome back to Reynolds Coliseum. NC State has led the entire way. They have a seven point lead as we get ready to start the third quarter as they take on Syracuse Pam Ward, along with Deb Antonelli. So uh, NC State with the lead, even though Lisa Kunane only played five minutes. Yeah, I think you got to feel good if you're Wes Moore based on the production you got with your seniors in the starting lineup who got NC State off to such a great start with great pace and their ability to score by spacing the floor. But I think the, the best thing about NC State is that they move the ball so well in the first half. And that's important for NC State not to play so much off the bounce, but to play off the pass. So against the three-quarter court pressure, they do an excellent job of spacing outside the three-point line and they do a good job of moving without the ball and getting into the gaps of the zone and into the playmaking spot down the chute from the elbows all the way to the rim being able to make some nice plays and on the other side Kiara Lewis is a terrific scorer we know that she's a ball dominant guard and she's terrific in their ball screen defense or in their ball screening offense and she reads the second level so well you have to constantly keep changing the way you defend her in the ball screen because she is that smart and plays with that high of an IQ with the ball in her hands. Take a look at the numbers. NC State crushing them on the glass and most other categories. Not so good with the turnovers, but again, Kunain because of two personal fouls in five minutes. And is starting on the bench again. It is senior night here. Four Wolfpack seniors being honored before the game and Westmore starting them. Ace Koenig, the only every everyday yeah. senior starter I mean, usually. Like we said, you know, if Westmore sees a lineup that's working, he'll stay with it. And having the four seniors in this lineup right here on the floor is the way they started the game. 
Jones had seven, she's a junior. Erica Gassell. Nice job off the bench, there she is. Starting today because she's a senior, Holy Smokes, that's three on Finkley. Well, Finkley didn't get to play that many minutes at all either. Played less than 10. Oh, I actually changed that. They called it on Gabby Cooper. That is a huge break for Syracuse. I'm impressed with the seniors for NC State to show up with the emotion of today and manage getting NC State off to such a good start. So Cassell delivers at the line. Now with a new season high, eight points. Third quarter had been quite kind to NC State until the last four games, three of which they lost. And the only other, the only one they won was by two points over Miami in a nail biter. The cell, probably not a good time for Cassell to take that shot. Always a good time for Gabby Cooper though outside the arc. Cooper yet to hit her stride. That's just her third shot of the game. Ely slicing. Skips around the perimeter. Another outside shot. That cups out to Strotman. Lewis. Wow. Just finds the yeah. way to the basket. I, I think fatigue Lewis. playing a little bit of a role with the extended minutes for some of the players on the floor for NC State. And this is Syracuse basketball. After the make, they put the pressure on. Yeah, watch right here. There's no defense on the screener, so there's no one stepping up to hedge. There's nobody jamming the screener. Uh, Kiara Lewis reading the second level and sees no one there, does a great job of getting to the rim. And look who's in the game already, Elisa Kunain. Jones. Kunain can't get hit. Jones able to come away from the pack. I'm telling you, Kayla Jones hustles. That's three consecutive misses outside the arc for NC State. And that just plays right into Syracuse's tempo. You don't match up with Angsler in transition. Bucket for the Cuse. Angsler, who has been struggling in the last few games, buries that three. What was a 12-point lead is down to four. Syracuse, the comeback kids as usual this season. They have been, had an exciting season, haven't they? I mean. Their record's misleading. They are nine and seven in the league, played a much tougher out of conference schedule this year. There's a foul on the perimeter as Kunane ends up on the floor. Watch Engsler run the lane hard and run it wide. Great vision up the floor by Lewis. Terrific job of spotting up outside the three point line. I think Engsler is going to be a superstar. I really do. I think she has a chance with her skill set. She has a, a terrific offseason and really works and gets ready for next year. I think she could be a superstar playing alongside Tiana Monacahia along with Kiara Lewis, who will be back. It's a pretty Lewis. good three on the perimeter. Yeah, I'll take them. Kiara Lewis picked up her second foul, by the way. Off the rim, rebound for. Binkley State has missed all five of its shots in this quarter. See, right away, you've got to get on Lewis earlier than that in transition. Binkley posting up against Kunane and... Wow. That's that, three? That's not... Uh, uh, calling it too close? Well... Westmore thinks they are. I don't know about that. This is a better angle. There's a bump. There's the bump. You're allowed one, unless the official thought it was too much and considered a displacement, but. Kunane so, staying in there with three. Westmore has not made a move to get someone to the scorer's table. Hanksler now posting up. There was a lot of contact on that initiated by the offense. But you know what? That, that's where it's got to be consistent in the post. That's what will make most people upset. And Syracuse on a 7-0 run. 
two point game. Single digits on the shot clock for Koenig. Drives, hits. Good read. She was waiting for Kunane to get open, and she kept her dribble long enough to be able to finish with her left hand. He's struggling with her three-point shot the last few games. And see, Quentin Hillsman's one of those, Pam, when the offense is in front of him, he's a terrific play caller. Koenig. Ace has now missed four of her five three-point attempts this evening. Engsler. Pinkley, good rebound over Kunane. Couldn't finish. Yeah, Kunane smartly did not try to defend that with those three fouls. Ace Koenig, boy. First 23, she was terrific. The last four, that's coming into today, two of 20 from three, and she's one of five tonight. That is Kunane doing, or excuse me, Conan doing a great job of setting up Kayla Jones outside the arc. Is Koenig also not a natural point guard, but has developed in a pretty good one. Top 10 in the league in assists. Angsler just keeps it alive. Lewis drew the foul. I mean, Kara Lewis is all out baller. I mean, she loves to play. It's a third foul on Ely. I, I mean, the pack. She, she's always looking to score. And she also is a playmaker. She is terrific at getting to the free throw line. Coming into this game, she shot 119 more free throws than her next closest teammate. That's a lot. Fourth in the league in scoring, fifth in assists. That's how valuable she is to pace and space for Quentin Hillsman. And leads the ACC in minutes played. Over 37 per game on average. Great numbers as usual for Lewis this evening. Tony cut off at the pass. Hunter, good look. Great fill behind the penetration by Kunane. And a good job of Grace Hunter to relocate as well. And that's why she was wide open. She was right in the slot. What was a two-point lead just a couple of minutes ago is back up to eight. Oh, what a catch. And that's going to be on Kunane. Fourth personal foul on Elisa Kunane. Could be a big development. Good ball movement. Great job, Grace Hunter getting in the slot. And Kunane with four fouls. Uh-oh, Wolfpack. NC State with an eight-point advantage over Syracuse, but right before that last break, Elisa Kunane picked up her fourth personal foul for the pack. Well, Pam, you said she hadn't fouled out all season. She's played nine minutes and eight points. She's typically very productive, but Westmore trusted her with three and left her on the floor, and she blew it. She blew his trust. <laughs> now we won't see her for at least till the fourth quarter, and then we'll see how long NC State can play without her as long as they have the lead. Gabby Cooper nailing the three. Again, coming off back-to-back -back double doubles against both Notre Dame and Clemson. Trims the lead to five. Syracuse has not led in this game. Tony inside to get Engsler for going over the back. Really nice job of Erica Cassell getting Engsler on her back and holding that contact while the ball was in the air. That is the third on Engsler. Three team fouls apiece. So no Kunane. Look at Lewis for a hip check out on the perimeter, and they do. That was a third on Kiera Lewis. So I think Quentin Hillsman knows he has to keep her on the floor, but if you're NC State, now you're trying to put her in an ISO situation defensively to see if you can pick up a fourth on her. They've stayed in that zone a long time. Usually they switch out to man. 
What a great finish inside by KJ, Kayla Jones. Jones able to score over Jaldi Tobdi. Yeah, I think Jaldi Tobdi, Tobdi needs to get some, some touches right here. They need to, to get her in a position to catch on the block where I think she is just too physically demanding and tough on the interior. There she is right there. See, Cassell pushed her up the lane. Oh, that did not look good. It's Tisha Hyman. Hyman went down, Pam. She immediately grabbed her leg. Found by Hunter, who just picked up her second, but the concern is for the true freshman from White Plains, New York. Right outside of New York City. Pointing to her right knee. Karen McKinney is the athletic trainer for Syracuse. See Delisha Milton Jones, the other staff members out on the floor. Well, the whole staff is out there. It, it, Hyman hasn't moved yet. Watch her drive. Right there on the plant, you see she immediately went down. Now the right knee. We won't, don't want to speculate, but let's hope she's going to be okay. It did not look good at all. Von Reed over, that's on the left side, the associate head coach is very analytical, isn't he? As, a, as an assistant. He's uh, helping out right now while Coach Hill's been dealing with the emotion of his team. i tell you what, I, I can't stand to see a kid get hurt. Just the non-contact when she planted the planted the leg. Grace Hunter gets a well-deserved round of applause as she comes off. Cooper gets blocked by Koenig. Baldi Tobney can't get it to fall and a whistle after the fact. The ball was out of bounds. I thought there was a foul. Still do. Put the ball over to the pack. NC State hits four of its last five shots after missing their first five to start the quarter. Yeah. NC State is always good, Pam, when their four player can handle against pressure and can score like Kayla Jones. When she can do the things that she can do inside Westmore's system. Shot clock dying. Ely. Didn't recognize it, and it will not oh, count. I think you got to take a look at it. The officials waved it off on the floor, but it's so close. They're probably going to have to take a peek, and it shouldn't take long to look at it on the monitor. Joe Vasily heading over there now. Boy, that's close. at this, you go clock, light, horn. That's the way you, you review this. So you go clock first, then the light on the backboard, then the horn. Okay, yeah, you go that by the clock. Clearly, it was not out of her hands, but it was close. It did not take them long to ascertain that, so no basket. That was about as close as it can get. State coming in, as we mentioned, losing three of their last four games, all of them at home. And we asked Coach Moore, why? What's going on? He said, simply, we're just not shooting the ball well. He wants them to rebound better, take care of the ball better. But we've documented the three-point shooting being down during this stretch. NC State was playing Louisville two weeks ago today for first place in the ACC. And they've lost three or four since. 
Louisville clinching the regular season title outright tonight. Foul on Syracuse. That is three on Jaldi Tabi. Both she and Finkley have three. I love the exchange here between Westmore and Ace Koenig. You know, the two of them are two really good basketball minds, right? And they go back and forth sometimes in practice, sometimes in film. You know, one of the things you were talking about, NC State not shooting the ball well, Pam, one of the things that Westmore did after the Duke loss was he showed his team film of the shots they were getting and letting them know that you are getting good shots. You just got to start making them. Said there were several that rimmed out. Good looks, as you mentioned. Back-to-back -back sweet 16s. Good class this year. Well, last year was a remarkable coaching job getting them to the sweet 16 when you consider they lost four ACLs. Three were starters, and those three are on the floor. Have been on the floor tonight. Pardon me, Talia Washington nailing the three to get it down to six. Two minutes to go in the third. Coning inside to Cassell, one of those seniors coming back from a knee injury. Got stuffed by Strotman. There's too many dribbles in the post. One or two. Look at the quickness. And what then a, the tie-up. What a play by Ely. Possession, state. Watch the range, Washington, way beyond the three-point line. You know, one of the things we were talking about the other day, Pam, is that NC State, North Carolina, and Kentucky all play in gyms in the Power Five where there's no men's line on the floor. It's really interesting to think about, you know, what the percentages are for NC State and for North Carolina and for Kentucky as Erica Cassell hits a high post jumper. Good tag by Boyd. Now you got to recover to the three-point shooter. Washington. What a great sequence by NC State. You tag the roll. You recover to the three-point line with a long closeout on Washington because she's a shooter. You make her put it on the floor, and Cassell rotates over. Forced Syracuse into only their sixth turnover of the night. Jones, a little short, rebounds it. Angsler, good defense. Cassell has to kick it out to Ace. Got it. I think Ace is much better when the ball goes inside and comes back out after she ro rotates or relocates instead of her trying to dribble into her three. Boy, if somebody needed to see the ball go in the basket, it's Ace Koenig for NC State. Yeah, she hit her first one tonight and then missed four in a row before that one. Lewis does not get the bounce. Just a couple of Tenths of a second difference between the two clocks. See, and what a smart play by Koenig. Immediately looked up at the clock instead of trying to take a tough shot. That's having a good understanding of time and score. Jones, gonna have to put one up. Nope, gets it over to Cassell who puts it in. An 11 to three run, closing it out. Their biggest lead of the night, it's 61 to 48. Ace Koenig, O Canada, her second three of the night. And look who's the happiest person in the gym. Big smile. Fourth quarter about to get underway in Raleigh. Pam Ward along with Dev Antonelli. Charlie Cream with his projected seeds. He's got three AC, six ACC teams in. Louisville is the two seed. State right now is the three. And Georgia Tech, boy, what a job Nell Fortner's yeah. done. Nell's done a terrific job. A sweep over Florida State, a win over NC State here, a top 10 win. And uh, Kenny Brooks, don't be sleeping on Virginia Tech. They had a big win at home over Duke. 
Duke had won six in a row going in, into that game. Uh, Kenny Brooks has done a fantastic job. And if you haven't heard of Taja Cole in the backcourt, you better pay attention because she can play. Yeah, she had a double-double tonight in points and assists. Kitley had a double-double in uh, points and rebounds for Virginia Tech, who closed out the regular season Sunday at Louisville. I really like their team with Mabry on the top of the floor along with Cole. Kitley on the inside. Asia Shepard is a legitimate scorer. Kenny Brooks has done it block by block there. It hasn't been easy, and he's done a terrific job. Shot clock dying for Jones, who had it knocked out of her hands, and that's a charge. See what happens, Pam, when NC State dribbles too much, right? They get in rhythm off the pass. Too many dribbles here. Good job by Job Detaldi. Outside the restricted area, the play starts outside the lower defensive box. Terrific job. First foul on Kayla Jones. You're just joining us, Elisa Kunain has not played much at all tonight because of foul trouble on the bench with four. The state has added four points to their lead since Elisa went out, picking up her fourth in the third quarter. Jada Boyd got that deflection. And she's gonna go, oh, I thought she was gonna go to the free throw line. They wow. called travel. So did everybody in the building <laughs> who isn't wearing orange. There's Kunain, this is her night, a very un-Elisa-like night. Nine minutes. But I'll tell you what, Erica Cassell, the senior on senior night, has done her job. Cassell with a season high 12 points. All four seniors getting the start tonight. Lewis a little bit short. John DeTobby tipped it over to Cooper to keep it alive. NC State finishes at Virginia on Sunday. Syracuse will host Boston College. This is the most minutes that Erica Cassell has played in ACC play this year. There she is with the ball on the top of the floor. Did not play at all against Duke on Monday here. Shot clock at five for Koenig. Cooper. On the charge, she's got Lewis next to her. Koenig with her second block of the night. She has as many blocks as threes tonight. <laughs> what a play, what a good recovery. You get a two on one like that, you gotta score. Ace Koenig has seven blocks coming into the game. She's got two tonight. Last seven minutes, Syracuse has only one made field goal. A little shake and bake by Lewis. There you go. So good. So strong. So tough-minded with the ball in her hands. 11-point advantage for NC State as we take a timeout. Oh, wide open. Exler! Lewis challenges X and hits it. No way. Believable. No way. Clinton Hillsman can't count his team out of any game, but let's take a look at their resume. They are not in the tournament, according to Charlie Cream. Well, you look at their numbers, and I mean, you know, the one thing you don't know from the NCAA is, is since a, there's an unbalanced conference schedule, how they look at that. You know, your quality of wins, your quality of loss, and you're not just comparing yourself against the rest of the ACC. You're looking at those teams that are on the bubble in the Big Ten, Big 12. That's, how you, that's who you compare against. Hunter got it blocked from behind by Cooper. It stays with State with three to shoot. See Syracuse. Going to seven straight NCAA tournaments. They lost in the second round last year to South Dakota State as a three seed and got to the final four years ago before losing to Connecticut. They're not gonna get a shot off. Great trap. Terrific job defensively by Quentin Hillsman's team.
Trotman on one of the few good looks she's had from the outside. Couldn't get it to go. It's, it's an NC State ball. So Quentin Hillsman has done some things. Yeah, we love talking to him. He is a really interesting guy. He's a former youth Golden Gloves boxer, former gospel drummer. His mother is a professor of gospel music. He wrote a book about the art of playing the tambourine. It's a textbook because he was a teacher. And then he's a vintage clothing shopper, especially on the road on game day. And when we found out today, he loves Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. So when you see Q at the <laughs> ACC tournament next week, give him a Reese's Pieces or something. Yeah, he had a big smile on his face when he got that cup. It's always a perfect choice. Very interesting guy, kind of a Renaissance guy. Grew up outside of Washington, D.C. in Prince George's County. And he has taken this team to unprecedented heights. But he's not going to be happy about this. Kiara Lewis just picked up her fourth foul. And he is keeping her in there. And again, that's a tie that belonged to his dad. The anniversary of his death coming up on March 2nd. So It'll be 19 years. Way to honor his pop. His dad, Horace. Of course, his mom, Joan, Dr. Joan Hillsman, I'm sure who is watching right now, is the director of African American music and a published author and historian about African American music. It's really interesting uh, some of the things that Coach Q has done in his past. Cassell picked up the offensive foul. Tommy Tommy from the outside. She's capable. She's got a good percentage out there. 0 for 2 tonight, however, yet 44% on the season. Shot only 18 coming into this one. Remember, she's just a redshirt sophomore, was an ACC All-Freshman performer last year. Oh, good hustle. Good ball movement by the seniors, trying to strike quickly. Koenig. picked up her fourth personal. And watch this loose ball off the glass. That's all ball. See, you got to change your angle if you're an official to be able to get that call. Fans have a reason to boo on that call. Four on Ely. She's staying in the game. And her first start tonight because she's a senior, actually has her degree, a grad. Boy, job Detaldi not having a good night finishing no. around the rim. Grace Hunter, though, what a night for the senior. Playing her most minutes in ACC play this season. Look at the depth for NC State starting to grow because when you look over there on the bench, Jakia Brown-Turner and Kai Crutchfield are both starters aren't getting a lot of minutes tonight. It just speaks to the depth of NC State. And Kunane with foul trouble, so we're seeing a whole new crew out here for the pack. And I'm not saying that uh, load management or resting or any of that stuff is, is that important when you're a college kid, but it's something that's crossing my mind while I'm watching. NC State and Kai Crutchfield and Jakia Brown-Turner cheering on their teammates as NC State with a 13-point lead. We are back. It is senior night, and the seniors have had themselves a night. They sure have. Uh, what great balance, especially for these three with what they've gone through in their careers. Erica Cassell, Grace Hunter, ACL injuries last year cut their season short. So they have been terrific tonight in senior night, and Ace Koenig, he is starting to get back on track. She's taking good shots tonight. She's much better in catch and shoot than she is going off the bounce trying to create her own, and when the ball goes inside and she relocates out to the perimeter, she is deadly from that three-point line. Hunter and Cassell both in the double figures. Cassell with a season high 12 points. NC State trying to finish second in the league. They got some help tonight because Duke lost to fall to 11 and 6. A 
Lisa Kinane back out there with the four fouls. Soft touch by Angsler. So if this score holds, NC State will clinch the second seed in the ACC tournament behind Louisville, which clinched the outright regular season ACC championship for the first time. And then you got Duke, Florida State, Virginia Tech in the conversation as Ace Koenig with her third triple. Well, up to date standings, Florida State. Three teams, really, Boston College is still in the mix too, fighting for those top Maya four seeds so you get that double buy. Stay with some pressure. Somebody's playing with one shoe. It's Gabby Cooper for Syracuse. <laughs> Lewis knocks it in so Gabby can gather her shoe. Kara Lewis says, I'll, I'll just score so yeah. Gabby can get her shoe yeah, back on. Just finish that then. 24, Kiera. NC State has not been bothered by Syracuse's pressure. Done actually a good job of handling it. Kunane flies through the air but can't collect, co uh, collect it, pardon me. It's under the 11th men's basketball coming your way. How about Louisville hosting Virginia Tech at 6 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And if you tune in at noon Eastern, you can see those same two teams on the women's side match up on the ACC Network. Big, big game for Virginia Tech. Yes, women. Yeah, if they want to be one of those top four seeds. Now it just got interesting, right? Nice oh, dish. Gosh. I'm telling you. Kara Lewis is fantastic. She reads, unselfish. That's the first time a Syracuse, or second time Syracuse has gotten a steal off their pressure. Couldn't convert, however. Now Koning behind everybody. I think Ace Koning might be back. She might be back. 13 points. She's three of nine from three. But all good looks. Yep. Now to number 33. That's it. Elisa Kunane is just fouled out of this game. And does so with eight points, four rebounds. She's fouled out in 11 minutes of work. Wow, good job of attacking the outside hip. Yes, <laughs> more so than the hip attacking on the other side. Angsler gets the air ball chant. I'm telling you, this game is not over because of the way Syracuse presses, this game's not over. The way they press, the way they can turn you over, NC State's got to make sure they take care of it here. Tell you what, Kayla Jones has been terrific breaking pressure all night. Cassell throws it to Westmore. He's going to get Hobby back into the game. Lisa Kunane. The, 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 yeah. Maybe the hand in the face might have affected the pass. <laughs> Just wanted to mention Elisa Kunane's eight points ties a season low. I think her minutes are a season low. Gotta be a lot of minutes, right? Angsler. I'm surprised Angsler turned down that three. Yeah. And when Engster went into the lane, the, the NC State band right in front of her were yelling air ball because of the last shot she put up. It is indeed for Kunane a season low in minutes 11, tying a season low in points 8 
but still they're up 11. Tell you what, Ely's done a good job managing the game. She's not gonna show up with a lot of points in a box score, but her decision making has been very solid. Another whistle and a foul on NC State. Got a lot of whistles tonight. It's the first on Koenig. And here's Jodley Tobby. Stop the clock, free throws. Syracuse's press is coming. Let's see if NC State throws over the top. They were working on a baseball pass today. But I think uh, Kunain was the player that can throw that pass. She's not on the floor. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, KJ can't make that pass as well. There's Kunain on the bench, fouling out just uh, 11 minutes, sitting next to Erica Cassell, who's had herself quite a game. Look at KJ handle through that pressure. I'm telling you, it's invaluable, the skill set that she brings to NC State's system. One minute to go in the fourth. Jones, it's a little bit too strong. Hobby knocked it out of bounds. And now it looks like they're gonna Yep, go to the monitor to make sure. Perplexed and frustrated, Westmore would like to get out of here with a W. They've lost three in a row at home in three of their last four. Hard to tell from that angle. how they can overturn it just look from looking at that angle. Yeah, I think it's Syracuse ball. So NC State, as you mentioned, three straight home losses, losers three of four. If you would have come in and said, Elisa Kinane's gonna play only 11 minutes. Yeah. You might not have anticipated this outcome. Well, uh, especially because Syracuse has such a dominant low post game when they play through it. You know, Jock Detaldi didn't score and didn't put up a lot of numbers. Strotman uh, had a tough shooting night. And Finkley was in foul trouble. Yep, so some early foul trouble there. And uh, Kudane being out did not, Syracuse could not take advantage of it. Let's put it that way. And it is senior night for seniors. And they have 38 points. The rest of the team have 31. So uh, what is shaping up to be a really good senior night, of course, you get a top 16 seed, they'll come back and host in the first, second round of the NCAA tournament, but always special senior night's gotta be. Oh, it's, it's always an emotional night. Syracuse does indeed hold on to the basketball, but they're gonna call a timeout. We will take one as well, just a 30 second timeout, then we're back to Reynolds. Kayla Jones, they call her KJ. What a skill set tonight, outside the three-point line, handling against pressure all game, unselfish, moves without the ball. Perfect in uh, that four-out, one-in system that Wes likes to run. Kayla with 12 points, 13 rebounds, her fifth double-double of the season. Cooper. I'm surprised Cooper didn't kick it back out for a triple, and Strotman, a great look. Just not a good shooting night for her. Now the fans at Reynolds, most of them on their feet. Ace Koenig on senior night with her family from British, British Columbia in attendance, hitting three threes. That's gotta be a big relief for her as they look forward to closing out the regular season. And Wes Moore is going to get his seniors off the floor with a standing O from the Reynolds Coliseum crowd. I love when coaches do that. Coming 
Grace Hunter, 10 points, five boards, making her first start of the season. There goes Ace. Only Jennifer Howard has more made threes in the history of this story program. And she's gotta be feeling a lot better after tonight. Her good friend, she's probably gonna start crying again. Yeah, yeah she's smile. crying. Big smiles <laughs> crying. <laughs> Quentin Hill's been electing not to foul and let the clock run out. And Big night for the seniors on senior night. Shot clock violation, but Ace, Koenig, and company just gonna get ready. They'll go to UVA to play on Sunday. And then the ACC tournament, we're not gonna see them to the quarterfinals. With the uh, double bye, NC State with the win, they have nailed down the second seed in the ACC tournament. Three-game home losing streak is history. Syracuse falls to 15 and 13, nine and eight in the league. They will close out their regular season at home against Boston College. And here are your standings. There are your top two seeds: Duke, Florida State, Virginia Tech. All going to come down to Sunday, baby. I think NC State back in rhythm, survived the Cunane foul trouble. Their depth continues to evolve, and that is a good sign as we are getting ready to leave February and head into March. Big smile for Ace, and, and a good thing on senior night, you start the seniors part out of sentimentality, but you mentioned Westmore, if something's going right, he's gonna let his players play. They got extended minutes, and they played very well. And they've all been starters in the past, and they all survived significant season-ending injury, except for Ace Koenig. And they were productive tonight, and they played like a collective unit. So NC State takes it 69 to 60, the pack, the number two seed. We will see them in Greensboro next week. For Deb Antonelli, I'm Pam Ward, our entire crew. There's Ace, the senior. As we say so long from Reynolds and we send you back to the studio. Welcome into the ACC Network Studios alongside Kelly Gramlich, Monica McNutt, and Elena Beard. I'm Kelsey Riggs. NC State, guys, gets it done at home on senior night. It is just senior night, but at the end of the day, that is a night that means a lot, Elena, to those ladies wearing that uniform. Yeah, and it was, it was awesome that they could come away with a win with Hunter and Cassell. Um, playing their best game as, as well as Koenig. Um, I thought she stepped up tonight and, and played really well. A pretty solid game tonight. Kayla Ely in the mix. I mean, that's yeah. a special moment you saw at the end of the game, although she's just a sophomore, Elisa <laughs> Kunain, getting emotional about some of her senior teammates moving on. It's a great day. That was pretty cool to see. I mean, it's obvious that a lot of those seniors mean a lot to Elisa Kunain, and it's going to look a lot different for her next year without those seniors. But I also thought it was a really good sign for Ace Koenig to get going. She's had an up and down year shooting the ball, and if they want to be able to advance to the ACC tournament championship game, they did secure the two seed. If they want, 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 want to advance, I think Koenig has to shoot it well in that tournament. Absolutely. It was also a good sign that they can win the way that they did with uh, Kunain only playing 11 minutes. 11, that's, a, yeah. that's a big deal. And Kelly, as you just said, the number two seed locked in, the number one seed was already already locked in with Louisville uh, before this game. So we knew what that looks like. Now we know who has the top two seeds. But as we get ready for the ACC tournament right now, if it started today, this is what it would look like. You see Louisville, NC State, Duke, and Florida State with that double by those top four teams. Guys, who's the most dangerous team right now? Define dangerous because <laughs> Kelly and I have different definitions of dangerous. Well, tell me what your definition is and who. Well, my most dangerous is going to be Virginia Tech. Okay. I think that's my most dangerous. I don't know that I see anybody from that first day one of action emerging deeply, but I think Virginia Tech is playing really good basketball right now, and they could do it. If we're saying dangerous to win the tournament, maybe not a team that some would expect. Okay. I think Virginia Tech is in that discussion. They're outside the top four. It is very tough to win it outside the top four. We've, we haven't seen it in the women's side. We've seen it a few times with the men's side. Duke did it one year as a five seed, but it's so difficult to win three games in three days. It's much easier to do it if you have that bye. Absolutely. I'm going to go with Duke. Uh, I think they're playing some of their mm -hmm. be best basketball despite a loss tonight. I said it before 
before that tonight wasn't a bad loss. Um, they needed to get it out of their system, so I, I would pick them to win. Do you feel like a win like this for NC State at home on senior night, does it get them back on track to a team that kind of down the stretch, Kelly, has been struggling a little bit? Yeah, I think consistency. It, it does get them back on track. No one wants to play them right. in the ACC tournament. They might not be the favorite, but no one wants to go and play a team that's that good and that deep, and those guards showed up tonight, which was big. Uh, the 11 minutes for Kunain is such a big deal because we've talked down the stretch how they seem to struggle when they couldn't go through her. And so tonight for them to be able to score and get backup scoring. Some of those players we saw on the floor tonight, Hunter, Cassell, they didn't see a ton of minutes during the regular season, but you'll need depth as we get into tournament play. We will, uh, speaking of the tournament, we'll be there starting on Friday. We'll, of course, have you covered Wednesday and Thursday from the studio here. And then we will be in Greensboro starting Friday. Packer and Durham also going to be in Greensboro. So make sure you stay tuned for that. And stay tuned just a little while longer because all ACC starts right now. Right now, let's look at another one of the top 10 teams in the country in action. Senior night for the Wolfpack as they took on Syracuse. Early first quarter, NC State on top. Ace Koenig for three. She knocks it down. NC State building on that lead. Then a little bit later, how about Kayla Jones? Eventually, from the outside. <laughs> Take a little pass and get it around. NC State up nine. Then next possession, it's Kiara Lewis. And guys, she knocks down a three, trying to keep the game close. Syracuse down by six. NC State would put it away. Ace Koenig comes up with the big block on senior night. Here is Ace after the game, after NC State's win. We are here with Ace Koenig's senior night. And what a senior night you had uh, today. You hit three threes today. Congratulations first on that. And how, would, how did it feel just to, to, you feel like your shot was a little bit uh, back on track tonight? Yeah, um, you know, it's been a little bit slow and it gets frustrating as a shooter because you think every shot's gonna go in. Um, so, you know, my family was able to come in and my dad was in here and uh, making sure that he was correcting the things that he felt were going in. Uh, it worked out, so if I could have him here for every single game, that'd be awesome, but <laughs> he does have to work, so. <laughs> Ace, uh, four seniors, big night. It's always an emotional night. How'd you guys get in rhythm so early in the game? Um, you know, these are, my teammates, the seniors are all very skilled and um, they, just have not been able to be on the floor because of injuries. And it, they were able to get in rhythm because we played together so often and it's been four years of us together and um, we were able to get in that groove and it really felt like old times. So it was really special, especially for uh, those three seniors who are able to get on the floor and Erica Cassell had an amazing game. Um, and it was just super special and emotional for everyone. How about this crowd? You know, Reynolds Coliseum has been sold out. You guys have, have created an incredible buzz here in Raleigh. What did it mean to be able to win one for the team here in the crowd? You know, the fans really deserve that one. Uh, they have been supporting us through our ups and downs, and luckily there haven't been a whole lot of downs, but they show up every single time and they cheer super loud, and they are what make it special being here in Reynolds Coliseum, so it wouldn't be the same without them. Now, the senior night, but it seemed like the most emotional person on your team was the sophomore, Elisa Kunain. She, she seems like she could barely keep it together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she is definitely the biggest heart on the team, and she was, um, you know, she was actually crying in the shoot around today, thinking about it, and she says she's been crying all through the day. Um, you know, me and Erica Cassell are her roommates and everything, so uh, sh I'm sure she's probably crying down there right now. All right, you, you can go console her. Congratulations. Big win as you had your you, number two seed in the tournament. You got that locked down. So uh, Ace Koenig, big night tonight. NC State with the win. Thank you.